Hello everybody and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we're doing one that we've already done before but uh, it keeps coming up and there's been some updates and some changes some new tools out so let's go ahead and do this again and it's going to be how to install add-ons okay a lot of people still struggle with it I still get a lot of questions you know where do they go etc um, so let's start with the first portion here where do they go now in order to answer that we need to find something first all right so let's see here first thing you're going to want to know is that and this is something that i've mentioned before and i'm still going to stand by this if when you installed and this is via the microsoft store i'm not sure how steam works steam it may be in a different directory you may not have this option but i would assume that you do because the installation should be the same as far as what it's requiring and offering but i could be mistaken on that but when you do your install, if you saw this page, okay, and it said install packages, and it gives you a browse button, you want to change it from whatever the default is, okay? And the default will be wherever you're installing the simulator. Pick a different folder. So what I did on mine is I went to my C drive. I created this folder called custom folders, and I went to MSFS 2020 packages. I created this folder, okay? and then I got these two. This is what was installed by the installer. The reason why I recommend everybody do this, A, you want to do it on a drive that has a lot of space on it, um, and B, because your account, your user account, will automatically have full permissions to any directory that you create. Okay, by default, this is not where, um, how it works with Microsoft 2020, or Flight Simulator 2020, so we're gonna go to our installation directory, which in our case was C, should be program files. It's been a while. I haven't looked for it in a minute. Hang on. Oh, no, I know where it is. Sorry. It's going to be in C. It's going to be in users. Hello. Come back. Thank you. Overkill. And then it's going to be, and this is a hidden folder. If you don't see this, you need to come to the view button and hit hidden item items up here in this app data folder will pop up it's gonna be app data local and you're looking for I believe it is flight simulator nope packages I think yep packages and then now's where we find the flight simulator where are you There it is, gosh, right there. So it's a flight simulator with some weird key behind it. Okay, and then it's going to be in, I believe it is local cache. Packages, and there they are. So here's the directory. I know that was a lot. So it's app data, local, packages, Microsoft Simulator underscore weird number local cache packages this is the default location now it is very likely that before you reach this point you will get an error saying that you do not have the rights to access this folder okay there is a way around it and check my description or a, for the link in the description below it has a video on how to do a clean install and i walk through the security steps on how to remove that however by simply reinstalling and changing this directory to something of your creation you avoid all that necessity and it's much much easier to manage them it's much much easier to um, get to the folder that you want without having to go digging like we just did because that's obviously the, a lot of steps just to get to your add-ons folder so that's the first step you have to locate that folder and you have to be able to access it okay the folder that we're interested in is if we go to mine is the community folder anything that says community or anything that is uh, community made, I should say, a mod or an add-on, performance, whatever, it's gonna go in the community folder, any alteration to the game that we create, right? Okay, so now that we've established our directory, and by the way, if you have, if you did not change this, I, I know this sounds horrible, I still highly recommend that you guys uninstall and reinstall and create your custom directory because in the long run and as you get more and more add-ons as more and more scenery comes out as more and more aircraft come out and all these different tools and things that are coming out and making the simulator really awesome you know i mean we're only a few months in think about how many mods and add-ons there already are you know so as so many more of these come up you're going to be in that folder a lot okay so I really recommend it, especially while it's still relatively in its infancy. 
Um, I think it's going to save you a lot of headache in the long run. Okay. Um, and then the, so let's go ahead and move on from here now. So we've got that. So now let's talk about, well, what do you need to do an add-on first? Now, I highly recommend this next step as well because it's going to save you a lot of effort. So add-on tools, what am I looking for? This guy right here. All right, what this is, is, is a tool that allows you to manage your add-ons much, much easier. Installation is very simple. You simply extract it to any folder of your choice. So in my case, if I go to B, applications here, MSFS add-ons linker, this is the folder I put in. This is actually what was extracted. So I literally just extracted it, dragged it into this folder. And then we just launched the EXE. Now when you launch it for the first time, you're gonna be presented with something a little different than this. Okay, for the first time, what you're gonna see, oh, back up. Always run it in administrator mode. Let's do that. So you just right click and hit run as administrator. All right, and then what we're gonna do is you will be presented for the first time with a page that looks like this. It's gonna ask you where your MSFS communities folder is, presets folder will be default, and then choose your FS version, right? So it asks you what you're looking for. In our case, we did um, free path, jumpstart, it's gotta be right here because we didn't do well, MSM store, DVD, I guess it would be DVD technically, but anyway, it works regardless, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, and then you can rename your description column. You can, you have a couple of different uh, customizations that you can set. I didn't worry about that, but the big part is, then what you're going to do is you're going to create a folder called MSFS mods or mods or add-ons or whatever you want to name it. It really doesn't matter what you name it, but put it somewhere where you're going to put. These are all the mods that I have downloaded, extracted, and put somewhere. All right, and then what you can do here, after you hit add, okay, you pick your directory, so you find that folder that we just created, so in my case it would be applications, there's my mods folder, and I just hit okay, and then I'm gonna press okay here. And then you'll get populated this list like that looks like this. And so all we can do here is we can do, oh, let's do this. Oops. So this is what you guys will see. Okay, this is the, you'll see a, all the list of your mods that you have, okay, and you still keep the folder structure the same. So the name of the mod and then the actual contents next directory in, right? And then what we'll see, if we open up my community folder right now, the only thing that should be in there is the A32NX now. Okay, so there it is. That's the only thing that's in there. And again, because I'm, it has its own installer, so I'm not worried about using this for that. But even then, it recognizes it inside this directory. It knows it's there. It even gives me the version number, so it's pretty slick. And tells me what kind of mod it is. Now, it doesn't do that with all of them. I think that has to do with the way the mod itself is built. But let's say we want to install the 747 conversion from FSX. Boom. There it is. And it creates a link, so it doesn't actually copy the folder. What, it, what this is, it's creating a link to this folder so that way when Microsoft reads it and knows okay this is a link I need to open this up and then come here to actually get the data so it works out really great so you can even have these on an external drive okay and then again you just pick the ones that you want to install and just click and uh, activate them and if there's one that you decide you don't want say we decide we don't want to fly the TBM just click it boom it's removed and so that will make managing your mods significantly easier, especially for the ones that actually give you version information here. Okay, so you got the version here, so you know when it's out of date um, as new ones come out. This one at least gives you a good title, um, tells you most of what you need to know. Um, just okay scenery, uh, Gr Grand Canyon State, Flagstaff, tells us this, the Beechcraft, or uh, yeah, the Beechcraft King Air 350. And again, for most of them, it tells you what it is. We can sort them. So if we want to just have all of our aircraft in one spot, boom, we've got that. So now we can read them down or read down the list for our aircraft. And I think this is going to be the best way for everyone to manage their mods and add-ons, um, especially if you're uncomfortable with it. And if you don't want to have the headache of copying folders, deleting folders, things like that, you just have to manage your, your directory here and then add them and remove them as you choose over here with the, uh, the uh, add-on uh, manager. All right, so now let's real quick, we're gonna go ahead and download a mod and I'm gonna show you guys how to update something.
So let's come up here. I'm pretty sure I'm probably out of date with a couple of these. So let's look at my aircraft here. I haven't touched that TBM in a while, which is unfortunate because I love it. 5.5. Uh, .5, well, that was 14 days ago. So it's actually been a minute. Actually, I think I have updated it since then. So let's look at something else. Let's check. Let's check the G36. See if that's been updated 21 days ago. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to be current just because I said something. What about the CJ4? We haven't touched it in a minute. Now let's go back to releases. <laughs> Still 13 days ago. Okay, well, shoot. Well, let's just grab one. We'll just call it and say that it's not up to date. So if we were installing the G3000 mod for the first time, we'd grab it here. come to our downloads now the first thing that we need to do though is come here and find the G3000 so here it is here we're gonna remove it we're gonna come here and delete it because we're installing a new copy of it extract it make sure that's what's in it we're good copy it back over into our mods folder once it's there, as you can see there, bring up our tool again, reinstall it. Done. All right, so that's a quick breakdown, guys, of how you can uh, install and remove your mods using the mods linker. There's a whole lot more uh, more to this tool that I'll go over at a later time. For right now, I just want to keep things simple and get you guys rolling with your mods. I hope you guys found this useful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.